You're tired. You're poor. You're huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Some came to this land on the Mayflower. Some came to discover their lives. Some came to save them. But no matter how they arrived, one thing is certain. The same invitation they received echoes our hearts today. They invite us into a life that's worth living, no matter what our past. They encourage us to walk the path God's given us, no matter what turns confront us. It's beautiful, really, because we are the tired. We are the poor. We are the huddled masses who yearn to breathe free. And the oxygen we breathe is given to us by God through brave men and women who have died for us. We inhale freedom. We exhale gratitude. And so today, we remember. Today, we honor. Today, we pause. We pay attention. We acknowledge our indebtedness. And we rejoice in our freedom. This is a day of remembrance. This is Memorial Day. This is America. Jonathan, you lost the bet. I did get the men to sing up here. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. 
All right, well, what a wonderful day it is on this Memorial Day weekend. What a great video to start us off with. Um, so impressed with many of the ladies wearing their red, white, and blue today and all that is uh, reminding us of this weekend. You know, Christian said something before Sunday school that I thought was just very appropriate. You know, in our culture today in 2022, Memorial Day is looked at as just a long weekend that we get to enjoy. But the reality is, is that Memorial Day is here for a reason. And for those men and women who have given their life so that we can have the freedoms that we so well enjoy here in America. America may not be everything we want it to be all the time, but the fact is, is that there's no greater nation on earth. And I'm very thankful to be here, uh, very thankful as well. And as we, let's all stand together and let's sing our chorus. I think this song is, is almost uh, perfect for the weekend because America shows what God is able to do when we put him first as a nation. That may be waning a little bit right now, but we do have, we are thankful that he is able to keep that which he's committed. And Lord, we, uh, or we just praise our Lord for that and for all the work he has done here for America. So he's able. <laughs> he's able, he's able, I know he able I know my Lord is able to carry me through he's able he's able I know he's able I know my Lord is able to carry me through he healed the broken-hearted and set the captive free he made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see he's able he's able i know he's able i know my lord is able to carry me through amen what is our god able to do everything and anything that he so desires so as the men come forward for our morning offering, I'll ask Brother Jim Gales to lead us in a word of prayer. patriotic song let's stand together as we sing uh, our next song victory in jesus i heard an old old story how a savior came from glory how he gave his life on calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his prayer. 
precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, Come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and someday day I'll sing up there a song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen. If that's not a wonderful song for a Memorial Day weekend, I don't know what is. Please have a seat, and we'll cover our announcements for the morning. We want to uh, remember a few things coming up. Um, and by the way, if you're visiting with us here today, uh, there's visitor's cards in the pew in front of you. Please take a moment and fill those out. We'd like to record your visit. And, um, Take that visitor's card and, and fill it out. Just hand it to one of the uh, regular attenders here and we'll make sure it gets in the right place. So we thank you for that. I want to remind you of Wednesday night uh, service at 7 o'clock and we want to encourage you to come out as uh, Brother Jonathan continues a study in Romans. And uh, I think we're, are we getting in, are we still in 11 or going to 12 this week? Going to 12, uh, chapter 12 of Romans this week, so looking forward to that. Um, next Sunday, uh, well, a, a couple of different things going on. Next uh, Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we are uh, changing up our choir schedule a little bit, uh, practice schedule for uh, the summer months anyway. We're going to see how it goes. Um, but if you are not a part of the choir and would like to be, we practice this summer, we're practicing at 9 a.m. before church on Sunday mornings. And so we invite you to come out and be a part of the choir. Um, we, I, I think to have a little more uh, uh, time w with the in Sunday afternoons and things, it was uh, determined by the, by the majority to try that out. So we're gonna, 
be starting at 9 o'clock uh, with choir on Sunday morning. Uh, we invite you to come out. Uh, also, next Sunday at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, there will be a decorating party for uh, VBS, which will be the following Saturday. So next Sunday afternoon, we invite you to come out and, uh, you know, maybe you're not uh, teaching or a part of, of VBS, but you can join us next Sunday afternoon. I assure you we can use the extra hands and encourage you to come out and be a part of that as well. I also want to uh, bring your attention. We uh, will have a new Sunday school quarter starting next Sunday as well at 10 a.m. And um, this is going to be a segment on prayer. And we uh, invite you to come out. If you don't normally come out for Sunday school, I really encourage you to come out for this one. This is, uh, is going to be uh, on prayer, not just uh, something kind of lofty or, um, you know, soft and, and squishy. But we're going to get down to the brass tacks of, of how do we pray? How can we improve our prayer life? How can we get a better connection with God? And so I invite all of you to come out for Sunday school as well. If, you're not, if you don't regularly attend Sunday school, I encourage you to come out next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. So the choir at 9, Sunday school at 10, and our Sunday service at uh, worship service at 11. Next Sunday, lots of, of stuff going on. Um, the, and then uh, that will be followed by Saturday, June 11th is when we are having vacation Bible school. We have it just one day. Uh, it goes from 10 o'clock in the morning till two o'clock. We uh, in, encourage you, invite those pesky kids from the neighborhood. You know, maybe this is your chance to see them get transformed into a child of God. We encourage you to bring them out. Bring out your grandkids, bring out your neighborhood kids. Uh, and we will uh, look forward to uh, having a great time on Saturday, June 11th with Vacation Bible School. The theme is uh, the food truck party on a roll with God. Um, and if you have any questions or would like to even uh, donate some of your time, you're not already involved, talk to Kara Stevens. I'm sure we can find a place to plug you in for sure. And uh, we would very much encourage you to do so. Um, I know I have the, uh, the activities. And, you know, if you've ever heard of cats before, you'd be perfect to come join me to help with the, the, uh, uh, help with the young ones during uh, their activity time. Any other announcements or anything I may have missed? All right. Well, the choir has a new song for you, and we're, we're actually, uh, uh, this is a fun song. Uh, we hope you enjoy it. It's called In the Twinkling of an Eye. We're going to get there. It's a really fun song. <laughs> <laughs> We're just building up the suspense. <laughs>
looking forward to that time that our Lord comes and returns. Um, so, as the pianist plays through now, if you, as I catch my breath with that one, uh, as the pianist plays through, we'll greet those around us. Choir will come down. Please stand to your feet. Actually, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Let's stand together as we sing. <laughs> Sorry about that. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing, out, will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. To the Jehovah will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord for I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. <clears throat> Let's give that a rest. Play through as the choir comes down. <laughs> Not pulling it on the slides. <laughs>
time of fellowship and kidding around I was able to needle Jonathan over the that was good but you know what if you can't have a little fun with what we're what we're doing here we can't take ourselves too seriously um, I think it was just a conspiracy of the technology against me this morning but uh, we nonetheless well you knew those songs. that's it <laughs> Well, what was confusing is when I thought I knew the songs, but I was looking at different words up there. That's what the challenge was, because then you start second-guessing yourself. But it's all good. It's all good. We're very thankful this morning to have Marissa to come sing for us. We're looking forward to what the Lord has for us through her this morning. Marissa. I was back talking to Mike a couple weeks ago in the back and saw that uh, the church has a way to play cassette tapes. <laughs> so that got me thinking of all these uh, cassette tapes I've had sitting around 20, 25 years that I haven't been able to find CDs for. So uh, we found them. You know, they're not pri high priority on the unpacking list. <laughs> uh, I say we, but you know, nothing's lost till mom can't find it, right? So mom found them. <laughs> And the second time I put this one in, I was so excited to bring this to church. It's been one of my favorites. Second time I put it in, the tape broke. And um, it wasn't one of those, you know, most of those back in the, where you just take out the little screws. It was so, mom performed a cassette tape transplant, transformed it into a new tape. <laughs> so uh, she, she worked hard so that we could, we could bring this today. <laughs> would my church be if every member were just like me how many souls would be saved today if it all depended on what i say i wonder how many prayers would my lord have to answer if all that he heard came from me i wonder what kind of church would my church be if every member were just like me how many times have i said i love jesus and turned a deaf ear to a need how many times have I said I'm a Christian, but never once soul did I lead? How many luxuries have I passed by to have more to give to the Lord? Jesus, I promise as long as I live, from now on I'm gonna do more. No wonder my pastor has so many burdens I never do offer to share. No wonder the members all bow down with sorrow, for I never offered to care. No wonder the heathen are dying in sin, no wonder the missions all lack. My heart has grown cold and I've lost my first love, but Jesus, I'm on my way back. How many times have I said I love Jesus and turned a deaf ear to a need? How many times have I said I'm a Christian, but never once soul did I leave? Luxuries have I passed by to have more to give to the Lord? Jesus, I promise as long as I live, from now on I'm gonna do more. 
What kind of church would my church be if every member were just like me? How many souls would be saved today if it all depended on what I say? How many prayers would my Lord have to answer if all that he heard came from me? I wonder what kind of church would my church be if every member were just like me? What kind of church would my church be? What kind of church would my church be? What kind of church would my church be if every member were just like me? David, would you like to answer what type of church it would be if every church member was like her? <laughs> 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding about that. That is a powerful message in a song, and um, it gives you a lot to think about. And uh, but I was sitting there while she was singing that, and I asked myself, "Hmm, I wonder what I can say after that." So uh, no, I enjoy it, and uh, thank you so much for that choir. Good job, men. Great job on the song this morning. I was telling Brother Ted this morning he has had done a heck of a job working on the choir and with the choir, and he has, has been a lot better at that than I would be, and I'm grateful for him being here. If you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to Daniel chapter number five this morning. Daniel chapter number five. Brother Christian thought he was going to meddle in where I was going this morning, but he's not. He it come close. I thought at one point I was going to stand up and tell him to be quiet. He come very close, but not close enough to get me out of my comfort zone. So Daniel chapter number five this morning. Daniel chapter number five. How many of you is glad to be at church today? Say amen. 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 We're having a baptism on the second Sunday of June. Uh, we are baptizing Justice Stevens, Miss Carrie Offenberger, and Selena. So on the second Sunday of June, we will have a baptism and communion all in the same Sunday. Now, because we're having it on the second Sunday of June does not mean we won't have it in July. So we will have communion the first Sunday of July, all right? So next Sunday will not be communion Sunday. It will be the Sunday after that. And it was strategically planned because that's the Sunday after Bible school, all right? And we all know that Bible school can be very stressful and very draining at times. So that will give everybody a chance to catch their breath. All right, and uh, there, is there choir practice this evening? I don't think you announced. Okay, so there's no choir practice this evening. Also, one other thing is if you would like to donate money or food to the food pantry, please do so. Um, we are a little bit low in funds in the food pantry right now. It's costing us somewhere around $1,800 to $2,000 a month. Uh, to keep the food pantry rolling. Uh, we are planning a huge fundraiser in the fall, but um, if you want to redirect some of your tithes and offerings to the food pantry, please feel free, feel free to do so. Uh, one other thing, too, is last summer, uh, during the summer, the schools provided lunch for all of the kids, and that was federally funded. This year, they're not going to be able to do that. Uh, I think Cassidy told me at the end of the end of June, um, they're not going to be providing lunch to the kids until school starts back. So with that being said, I thought, um, I thought about it, and I think we, I know back last year during the summer, or the year of COVID, so the year before last, during the summer, we was able to make up uh, kids' bags, and it had a, uh, like a little self-serve macaroni and cheese, it had a can of beanie weenies, it had a can of ravioli, it had a juice box in it, it had some candy in it, and some other little things. So I'd like to be able to do that again this summer and uh, carry that throughout the summer. That way, if the kids don't have something to eat at home or mom and daddy's not cooking for them, they'll be able to feed themselves. So uh, keep that in mind as well. And if you want to donate some of that, feel free to do so. All right. So let's get into the word of God this morning. Daniel chapter number five today, Daniel chapter number five. When you find your place in Daniel five, whether it be in your Bible, your iPad, your iPhone, Android, or on the screen behind me, say amen. Yeah. All right. Daniel chapter number five. We'll begin reading in verse number 18. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. 
And for the majesty that he gave him, all the peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him, whom he would have slew, and whom he would have kept alive, and whom he would have set up, and whom he would have put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his highly throne. And notice this last part, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast. And his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with grass like oxen, and his body was wet with dew of heaven. Till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, Though thou knowest all this, but has lifted thyself up against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose all excuse me, and who whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified? Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this was written, and it was and this is the writing that was written. Many, many tekel you farson. Let's go to the Lord in a moment of prayer today. My dear gracious Father, Lord, we want to thank you, God, for another opportunity to come in your house today to worship and praise you. God, thank you for each and every one that's made their way out to the house of the Lord today. And today, Lord, as we come to your house in, in honor of Memorial Day, Lord, never let us forget about the men and women who's given their lives so that we could have a life of freedom. But also in this day of Memorial Day, Lord, let us not forget about the work that you did on the cross so that we could live a life free in you and that we're no more under the bondage of sin. And God, we're grateful for that today. God, we pray for those that are lost and undone without you today. Lord, we pray that you would save them before it's eternally too late. For those today that may have came discouraged, Lord, we pray that you will encourage them. For those that may have came depressed, Lord, we pray that you will touch them and help them. And all these things we ask in thy name. Amen. When we look today, I, we reflect on Memorial Day. And I want to preach on this simple thought today on the power of remembering. The power of remembering. One of the biggest battles that we have as Americans today is we're battling for the soul of our nation. We know that our nation is in trouble, but we know who holds the answer to the trouble that we're in, and that is Christ. Is that not correct? We know that the erosion of our society has been a slow process, but we've seen it assail rapidly over the past few years. It doesn't matter if there's a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent sitting in the Oval Office. This nation that we've all come to know and love continues to erode. The position we're in today is because of what we tolerated yesterday. And the position that we will be in tomorrow is because of what we tolerated today. And when I looked at Daniel chapter number 5, I seen a young man by the name of Belshazzar who failed to remember. He failed to remember what happened to his father and what call and what the cause was of the fail of his father. So today as we look at the power of remembering, I want to give you a few things that will happen if you fail to remember certain things. And if you fail to remember where we come from, I believe today that a lot of us, when Trump was in office, whether you was a supporter of him or not, that doesn't matter, but a lot of us kicked back and put our ease in Zion, gas prices were down, the economy was doing good, housing market went sky high, building market went sky high, 
And a lot of us got our focus on all, how good the country was doing. That we failed to remember that it's God who puts kings in the White House. And it's God who takes men out of the White House. And I believe today wholeheartedly the reason that we're in the place that we're in today is because we felt like we were invincible. And we were so happy with what was going on that we failed to realize that it is God who blesses this country. And it is God who has blessed this country. And so now we're under another administration and inflation's at an all-time high. The housing market's getting ready to crash. We're getting ready to head into a deep recession, regardless if you want to believe it or not. We're seeing a turn in all of the events. And what are we doing as Christians about it? A lot of us are talking about, boy, when so-and-so was in office, this wouldn't be going on. When we should remember that it's God who has this under control. And I believe today with all my heart that the reason we're facing what we're facing today is because the judgment of God on us as Christians that have failed to recognize the power of God. And we put our faith and hope in a man and God says, Nope, I'm going to show you who has full control of this world. Am I right this morning? So when I think about that, the power of remembering. Number one this morning, when I look at the power of remembering, when you forget where we came from, number one, you have the danger of losing all sense of remembrance. We see here that Belshazzar's problem was the same as many people have today. He had forgotten the valuable lessons of the past. He forgot where Daniel in chapter number 4 and verse number 37 where the Lord told Nebuchadnezzar those who walk in pride he is able to put down. Belshazzar forgot about that. We know that Proverbs says that pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Daniel, when he was talking here, he made the accusation of Belshazzar, you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. That's what Belshazzar was doing, boasting about himself. He picked up right where King Nebuchadnezzar left off. If you went over to Daniel chapter number 4 and verse number 30, is not this great Babylon that I have built? For a royal dwell, dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. Nebuchadnezzar failed to remember that it was God who put him where he was. It was God who enabled him to do great and mighty things. Today, Belshazzar, in this passage of Scripture, is doing the same thing that his father did, and he failed to remember the greatness and the power and the awesome work of God. You and I today will fail as Christians if we fail to remember that it is God that is in us and who is He who has made us to be like Him. You will fail today as, an, um, as a Christian if you fail to remember that God has blessed you to live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. You and I today will fail as Christians if we take for granted the beauty of being able to come to the house of God to worship and to praise the Lord our God. Verse number 19 of Daniel chapter number 5. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, languages, trembled and feared before him, whom he would have slew, and whom he would have kept alive, and whom he would have set up, and whom he would have put down. Why was Belshazzar, why was Belshazzar this well respected? Because God had put him in a place of power. 
But just as fast as God put him in a place of power, the God of heaven removed him out of his power because he neglected his mind. When I think about America, America used to honor God unashamedly and openly. It's etched in numerous monuments all over the nation's capital. It's carved in granite on many government buildings. We hold dear. It's it's printed on all of our currency that says, In God we trust. There was a time when we credited God with our blessings and our successes and turned to Him in our trials and our losses. But today, like Babylon, we have seemed to lost the sense of our remembrance. As I was doing the study and preparation for this, I read a line from Woodrow Wilson that said it like this, A nation that doesn't remember what it was yesterday and does not know what it is today or what it is trying to do, we are about a futile thing if we do not know where we came from and what we have been about. And when I think about that on this Memorial Day, I realize that we've fallen a long way from where we once were. We have gotten so far from our founders' paths that it's not uncommon to see the federal courts repeatedly doing things such as restricting manger scenes from city squares, removing Ten Commandment displays from government buildings, removing prayer from schools, and promoting homosexuality, critical race theory, and saying that it's okay. Giving our elementary school students books that are full of pornography, stuff that they shouldn't see at such a young age. But yet, the government says it's okay. Moving on this morning. Unfortunately, Babylon is an example of what modern day America is. But just as Babylon paid an expensive price for their sins, one day America must pay the price for our sins. I believe that's why Second Chronicles chapter number 7, verse 14 says, If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek thy face and turn from their wicked ways, then God would hear us and heal our land. When we think about that today, second of all, not only do I see the danger of losing our memory, our remembrance, but second of all, when we lose the power of remembering, we lose all sense of reality. We're in a day and age that people live in a virtual world. Y'all agree with that? Virtual reality is something that we used to make fun of, and now it's here. You can put on a pair of goggles, and you can play modern warfare or Call of Duty, whatever, and be in this world, and you can do all of these different things. But Belshazzar lost the sense of reality around him. Today, people foolishly think somehow God needs America to carry out his plan on earth. After all, we've won all the world wars. The Cold War is over, and we seem to think that we're the only superpower still standing in the world today. I disagree with that. We're not. The reason we're still standing is because the hand of God is on our country. All it would take is for China to step up and say, your debt is due, pay now. And quite frankly, we'd be up a creek without a paddle. But what keeps them from doing that? The hand of God holding them back and saying, I'm going to keep my hand on them for a little while longer. We've lost that reality Like those in ancient Babylon, we too think we're invincible. But remember, there was a time when Israel was the world's only superpower. They were one nation under God, and their motto was, In God 
we trust. And if you've been following along on Wednesday nights, God's promises still stand with Israel today. But God blinded the Israelites' eyes because they rejected Him. Moving on. Daniel chapter number 5 and verse number 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. When we see that, Belshazzar lost all sense of reality. He threw a big party, invited thousands of guests, but failed to realize that because of what he was doing, destruction was at his door. God doesn't care if it's one or one million when it's time to pay the consequence. And it's our time because we've rejected him that he will judge. He is no respecter of persons. This king was too blind and drunk on his own success to realize the strength of a kingdom or an individual is never on the outside, but on the inside. And Babylon fell because they had become corrupt on the inside with no more sense of remembrance of reality. Thirdly, this morning, not only do I see losing their remembrance, they lost reality. Thirdly, this morning, they lost a sense of restraint. Preacher, how do you get that? Go with me to verse number five, or Daniel 5, verse number 2. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of, notice this, where? The temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princesses, or his princess, sorry, and his wives... Why would he want more than one wife? I mean, how? Mm. And his concubines might drink therein. When a nation loses all sense of remembrance and reality, they will also lose all sense of restraint. As I begin to think about the sense of restraint. I put in my notes, I don't have enough time today to describe all the various forms of perversion that has bombarded our society through movies, television, media, and internet. Men have stopped leading their families in a spiritual and more moral development. They've neglected their wives and their children in pursuit of material wealth and power. They become so busy with their jobs, they ignore their wives and become involved with other women outside of the home. As a result, their wives seek, their wives begin to seek their own worth and value outside the home. Then because the male and female role models are no longer prominent in the home, children are developing identity problems of their own. Many of them are neglected and most part undisciplined. And much like the Babylonians, we've lost all sense of restraint. When I think about losing all sense of restraint today, look where we're at as a nation. I was reading an article, no, I was listening to the radio this past week. That's something I don't do a lot of. I listen to a lot of, I don't listen to the radio radio a lot. I listen to a lot of online stuff, but I was listening to the radio this past week. And the topic was birth rates across the world are down drastically. And when you think about that, preacher, why is that? Well, we have taught that, we have been taught that, and I'm not just knocking on sin, but on certain sins, but we have taken the role of the home. And just like I said, men are more worried about their careers than they are their family. And I understand that we have to make money and we have to survive. Don't get me wrong. 
But when you are too busy on your jobs and you neglect your family, then your priorities are in the wrong spot. Y'all with me this morning? And when we think about the drastic reduce in births, you have to think the rise of same sex as marrying is increasing daily. We have to think about the amount of abortions that are performed daily. We have to think about all of these things. I remember when I was in Bermuda not too long, a couple years ago, one of the gentlemen that was leading us around the town, we was asking about families and he said, uh, it's not rare for two or three families to live inside of the same house. And we said, what do, we, what do they do about all the kids? He said, what kids? He said, we don't have kids here. And I said, what, 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 y'all don't have kids? He said, no, we don't have that many kids here. He said, the reason that we don't have that many kids here is because men are so focused on their careers and women are so focused on their careers, they don't have time for a family. And this is what he told me that day. I'll never forget this. He said, pretty soon, you'll see that on your side of the ocean. Then I turned on the radio the other day. And that's what they're talking about. The birth rates are down drastically. Why? Because we failed to neglect and failed to remember the reality of what the home is supposed to be. And because of that today, we've lost the restraint. The respect of the house of God is nowhere where it used to be. Am I right about that? The respect for the word of God is nowhere where it used to be. And today when I think about that, we're in a dangerous place. Lastly, this morning, when they lost their remembrance, they lost their reality, they lost their restraint. Lastly, this morning, they lost their respect. When I think about them losing the respect, go with me to verse number five and verse number, <coughs> chapter number five, verse three. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which were at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines, drank in them. Verse four, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass of iron, of wood, and of stone. When we think about the danger of losing all sense of respect, he said, let's take what came out of the true house of God, let's corrupt it, and after we corrupt it, let's worship our gods that cannot see, that cannot hear, that cannot answer. And let's make a mockery of true Christianity. What's sad about that today is, is the reason the respect for Christianity has been lost in the world is because us as Christians have lost our respect for who God truly is. And for the power that God truly has. I believe there was, I believe when Daniel looked around and he seen the shouting, the drinking, and the immorality had come to a stop. The strange silence filled the banquet hall. People looked as if they were frozen in time. The sacred vessels were scattered around the tables. Daniel was the only one in the room who was calm. Then what did Daniel do? Daniel did what any good Christian should do. He took God's word without fear or favor and revealed to them what God had said. As Daniel stood before them, he began to, or before he began to interpret the writing on the wall, he preached a sermon with three points. Now, Wednesday night, if you watch the sermon, I told you I give you points, and then under each point, I give you subpoints. Daniel didn't give you subpoints. All right? But in this part, I'm going to give you the three subpoints that Daniel gave. 
Number one, there was a word about power. Daniel reminded Belshazzar that King's Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar's power came from God. Because he started in verse number 18, O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. Second, there was a, there was a point about pride. Daniel reminded the king that Nebuchadnezzar lost his kingdom because of pride. Verse number 20 of Daniel 5. But when, he, but when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne and they took his glory from him. In verse 21, Daniel preached about punishment and the judgment of God. And when he was driven from the sons of men and his heart was made like the beast, let me get back here, verse number 21. He was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses. They fed him with the grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointeth over it whomsoever he will. Daniel then applied the text to Belshazzar. And he said, number one, you've not humbled yourself. He said, when we forget these things, we become blind to the fact like Babylon, our problems are not primarily political, economic, or social. The decline of any nation stems from spiritual factors. And everything else is symptomatic. He said, you have failed to recognize God. The fifth chapter of Daniel concludes with these words. That very night, Belshazzar was slain. And Darius the Mede received the kingdom. That very night, while Babylon had partied with no sense of restraint or remembrance. The armies of the Medes and the Persians diverted the, Euphra in, diverted the Euphrates into swampland and they marched right through the city, the dry riverbed. And they ran under the city walls and took the city. Preacher, why did you preach all this? Because I want to let you know that God's judgment is certain. There's not a wall high enough or thick enough to prevent a person, a nation, from falling when God writes many, many tickle you farson upon the wall. Who knows how close we might be to our number being called? Who knows how close we might be to facing the judgment of God? We can know for sure it is which side we will be on when he separates the sheep from the goats. On this Memorial Day, as we remember those who gave so much freed, so much up for the freedoms we enjoy today, may we be reminded in the words of Daniel, the Most High still rules over the affairs of men. And may we humble ourselves before God and remember that it's God who has blessed America. When we think about that today, the minute that we forget to remember, we will lose all of the things that I preached on today. Those aren't happy things. That's Memorial Day, people say happy Memorial Day. There's nothing happy about Memorial Day. Memorial Day is a reflection of those who have lost their lives so that you and I can have freedom. And when you think about it in that way, this shouldn't be a day that we, I mean, I know we celebrate those who lost their lives, but we shouldn't be a day of celebration and partying, but it should be a day of gratefulness and thankfulness to God and thankfulness to the men and women who was willing to sacrifice all so that we could remain free.
Let's all stand our feet this morning, Brother Ted, if you want to come, Miss Janet, if you want to come. As we sing our song of invitation this morning, maybe you want to come around this altar today and say, Lord, help me never forget where my freedom comes from. Lord, help me not to be a Belshazzar and have to face your judgment in order to see the greatness of God. God, never let me neglect how good that you'd be into this country. Maybe today you say, Preacher, I'm lost and I need to be saved because, Preacher, I don't have that freedom and I don't want to be a Belshazzar and I don't want to die in my sin. Well, today would be a great day to give your heart and life to Christ. Maybe today you're a Christian and you say, Preacher, I've had spiritual Alzheimer's in a sense and Preacher, I've forgotten where God's brought me from and I'm going to ask, I'm going to come around the altar, I'm going to ask God to help me remember and always keep my mind fresh of the good things from Him. Whatever you need may be today, why don't you come? You say, I don't want to pray by myself, ask me and I'll pray with you. As we sing this morning, softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. play through once as we bow our heads maybe you need to thank the Lord today maybe you need to remember whatever the case may be make sure you draw close to him this morning he hasn't moved anywhere but of you Remember where he's brought you from and rem remember where you're going to if you're saved here this morning. I believe the invitation will be sufficient this morning. How many of you are glad you came to church today? Amen. 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 Well, enjoy your afternoon. Don't eat too many hamburgers and hot dogs. If you do, I'm going to preach on gluttony tomorrow night, or Wednesday night. Don't forget to come back Wednesday night, and we'll be in Romans chapter number 12, Lord willing. And uh, we're looking forward to being in Romans chapter number 12. And don't forget, next Sunday evening, we'll be having our church decoration for Vacation Bible School. All right? And we're looking forward to that. So, ever heart clear this morning? Amen. Amen. All right, we'll dismiss with a word of prayer. I will ask Brother John Munson to close us out in prayer.